Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. So in today's video I wanted to try out something a little bit different. I've never done one of these videos before but lately I've been watching a lot of like cultural differences videos. I've been living in Germany now for around three years consecutively I think. Uh, I come from Finland and I live in Munich. I used to live in Nuremberg but yeah around the Bavarian area is where I have been living so I definitely have some cultural differences that I can share with you guys between Germany and Finland. The first difference that came to my mind is the formality. So in Germany I feel like people are very very formal and you have to be quite careful and understand the situation when you need to call somebody in a formal way. So in English it's very hard to describe because in English you just call everyone you, you don't really have a formal version for that, whereas in Germany you say du oder sie. And if it's an older person or if it's your boss or even your teacher or something like that, it would always be the more formal version, which is sie. And if it's a friend or something like that, you can always duzen. It's sitzen and duzen is how you call that one. And in Finland you do have a formal and informal version, but the rules are nowhere near as strict as they are in Germany. In fact, in Finland, if you want to be safe, just go with the informal version. You will be much safer that way. But if the person is clearly older than you and you do not know them, then you should go with the formal version. But other than that, I feel like in Finland, it just doesn't really matter and it's safer to go with the informal version because otherwise I guess people could even feel a little bit offended and you know they feel old if you start to go with the formal version of Deidittely is the name of that. I for one still have difficulties in remembering to sitzen when you should duzen and yeah I get I get an embarrassing situation sometimes but you know I never mean anything bad by it but of course a lot of people might not understand that I am in fact foreign but yeah that would be difference number one the second difference that came to my mind is the speeding limits now I think this is a difference between Germany and many countries but since living in Germany I don't really drive a car that often but Whenever I do, I now love driving so much more than I did in Finland. When you go to the Autobahn, so the motorway in Germany, in most places, you can drive as fast as you want to. And while I might not be the one to go like over 200 kilometers per hour, um, I still will definitely go 180 if the motorway is free. And driving in Finland right now is super boring actually, because in most places you can't drive over 100 or definitely 120 kilometers per hour. Okay, third difference, which is maybe a little bit random. As someone who loves animals and especially dogs, I definitely realized this and my friends also told me about this, is that the dogs run loose all over Germany. Like if you own a dog, apparently there is no law or rule that you have to keep them on a leash. In Finland, I believe it is in fact law to keep your dog on a leash unless it's on a specified area where it says you can keep your dog loose. Now, I don't know which one is better necessarily, but I think as a Finnish person, I was always used to that the dogs are always on a leash and I wouldn't have to worry them like attacking me or something. And definitely a couple of times I have been like sort of attacked by dogs while being like on a run or something in Germany. And you know, most dogs are really nice. The only problem I have is that I feel like some owners maybe haven't trained their dogs properly enough for them to be running loose because obviously I would never do anything to hurt a dog and still they attacked me sort of a couple of times so yeah it's kind of scary sometimes and you don't really know what to think um, but on the other hand it's also lovely seeing that the dogs can be loose and that they're trusted here in Germany so that would be difference number three. Fourth difference I thought about was the authority with professors or teachers and I think this one is sort of a funny one. In Germany you are very formal with teacher. You sitzen so you speak to them formally. You would call them Mr. Matthews or Mr. Hausemann or whatever the teacher's name could be and or Professor Hausemann or something like that. Whereas in Finland you definitely don't do that or I've never been to a school or university where I had to 
call my teacher with the last name or with a professor or with a mister. You always called them with their first name, you were always very informal with them and sort of in like a friendly relationship. We even we even came up with like nicknames to our teachers, like we had a teacher called Becca or something and we would call him Beku, you know, and I don't know, we never asked him, but he never minded that we called him with a nickname that his class had made up for him, you know. I don't know, you're just very, very informal with your professors. It does not mean that you do not respect them, and I think that's kind of a difference between, like, education system in general with Finland and Germany, is that, you know, teachers trust that the students understand that the teachers are there to teach and they don't need to establish this authoritative figure for the students especially in the older ages in university or in high school for that matter you know it's just very friendly and you don't need to have an authoritative figure in a school so yeah that would be my fifth difference my fourth difference <laughs> so the fifth difference is to do with getting paid if you work somewhere and paying the taxes. Now, in Germany, I just feel like it's really difficult because maybe in Finland it is so kind of easy. So we all know you get a job, you get paid, and a lot of that money goes to taxes, right? And in Finland, kind of have a system in the government which then always knows how much you're getting paid in a year and your tax is determined through that and it's kind of just automatically determined by that and then each year you will either get a tax return or you will have to pay some taxes to the government and it just kind of automatically happens every year without you really having to do anything. Of course there's like a few small formalities that you have to do every now and then but in the big picture you don't really have to do anything whereas in Germany you have this whole humongously complicated formality and form that you have to fill in in order to get your tax return so your taxes are always taken from your pay and if you wish for your taxes to be returned you do have to take the time to fill in this complicated form in my vision complicated because in finland it was so easy they're always in german as well so you have to have help from somebody who understands german properly in order for you to fill them and then you will get them back and also some Germans or many Germans also just don't do that every year but maybe every second year or something like that because I don't know it's complicated or anything and a lot of Germans have tax advisories or tax advisors the minute they have enough pay because it's so complicated so it becomes easier then um, that they don't have to do it so yeah that would be the fifth difference and one of the things that I just for me is still so annoying because I hate doing my tax forms I haven't really done them very often yet, but yeah. So number six is going to the doctors. Again, I feel like Germany is making this so complicated, more complicated than it needs to be. I don't know. Um, in Finland, you have a problem, you go to the doctors, and that's it. In Germany, I feel like I have a problem. I don't even know where I have to go first in order to get treated for this problem and I think I haven't been to the doctors really in Germany yet I've only been to like the chiropractor but other than that since I've lived here I haven't had any kind of illness or anything happen to me yet knock on wood that I would have to go to the doctors um, but I've heard that it goes like that that you have to go to a general doctor first who then determines your problem and then he determines the doctor the specialist sort of that you have to go to and then for that you already have to pay 10 euros first and then you go to the specialist doctor and uh, with a note or some i don't i literally do not even know how it works that's how complicated in my opinion it is and yeah so you can't really even go to a gynecologist i think without first going to the general doctor not sure um but yeah, I think that's a big difference as well. Like, I just feel like the whole system of going to the doctors is super complicated in Germany. Because in Finland, it was so easy. I had something, I know where, knew where to go. I never had to go to like a general doctor or anything. And everything went super fast and quickly. So yeah, that would be a big difference. Seventh difference is a small one, but also something that I actually love about Finland is that we do not use the one and two cent 
coins the smallest currency or the money that we have is the five cent coin even that is a little bit annoying but in germany and in a lot of other european countries they do use the one and two cent coins and they're just really annoying you know they fill up my wallets every time because i never feel like paying with the one and two cent coins because that would mean me having to dig my wallet for a really long time on the cashier and yeah it doesn't work so they're just annoying in my opinion. I don't understand why we need to have such small currencies. Um, Finland is doing great without them. So I feel like Germany could learn from Finland there. But yeah, small difference, not really a big deal. <laughs> the eighth difference between Finland and Germany is that in Finland, the drinking age limit is 18 years old, whereas in Germany it's 16, except I think that it's like in Finland as well, it's 21 for the stronger stuff. But for like beer and wine or ciders or anything like that, it's 16 in Germany and in Finland it's 18. And I also feel like to do with this in Finland, they are way, way more strict in IDing you. And today in Germany, I don't get ID'd ever for when I buy alcohol, like in rare occasions, but mostly never. Whereas in Finland, I would definitely still get ID'd. They ID anybody who looks under 30. And I remember working in Finland in a cashier in a supermarket and I would just ID everyone. I ID'd sometimes people who were like 50 years old, you know, because they looked young and it was just always safer that way to understand that they are definitely not of age to drink and you just have to be very careful in Finland whereas I feel like in Germany they're much more relaxed and I guess because the age limit is so young that you easily look older I don't know but that would definitely be a difference at the same time where people in Germany can already drink at quite a young age. In Finland, the alcoholism problem, I think, is much more apparent. Like, I feel like Finnish people drink a lot of alcohol and strong stuff, especially. Like, Finland has made alcohol into a very big thing where it's difficult to get. Like, you have to show your ID very often you know young people it's very difficult to get alcohol and stronger stuff especially you have to go to a alcohol store you cannot buy it from the supermarket and you can't buy it between eight o'clock and eleven o'clock or something like that yet nonetheless with all these laws and rules it's Finland is full of people who drink way too much alcohol like alcoholics basically whereas I feel like in Germany people just know how to control their drinking a lot better. They are party people for sure, but I feel like the German people have a more tasteful manner of partying. That's what I would say. The ninth difference between Finland and Germany is that in Germany there are so many little villages everywhere. I feel like the whole country is very populated with a lot of people and of course there are way more people living in Germany than in Finland. The population of Germany is around 80 million and in Finland it's 5 million so obviously that's a big difference. In terms of area of countries they are pretty similar. Finland is just a bit smaller than Germany. Um, so it does make sense that there are a lot of small villages in Germany which are then populated with people as well. So you don't have to drive big different uh, big distances in order to get into a small village and they're very picturesque very beautiful i love the traditional bavarian villages for example and also if you're driving with the car anywhere you always drive on an autobahn so on a motorway and if you got off of the motorway you will pretty much end up in a small village very very soon whereas in finland there's not even that many motorways throughout the country at some point you will just kind of be in a random road along the countryside and you can drive very long distances without anything coming over and you might just see kind of random houses here and there where nobody else lives and there's not really such a thing as small villages in Finland only like small cities which is basically anything else except Helsinki and Turku I'm sure a lot of Finnish people won't like that but yeah that's what I feel like it is and it's definitely a huge difference um, between Finland and Germany the amount of people living in both countries let's go to my last difference which I think would be the almost the most annoying thing about Germany and that is that all the movies in the movie theater and in TV shows on TV or anything on TV is always dubbed into German yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
unglaublich. Eine ich ganz nicht neue Frau, das meine Damen und Herren. Zu verdanken. Ohne dich hätte ich das nie Nein, geschafft. Das heißt nur und in Finland, nothing is dubbed. It doesn't matter in which language it comes. If it's a Spanish movie, Chinese movie, Italian movie, English movie, it will come in its original language and then it will be subtitled. I cannot go watch every new movie that comes out because it is not guaranteed that it will be shown in English language in Germany. And whilst I do understand German, I just think I've never watched like I've never watched dubbed movies and I just think it sounds horrible. That's my opinion. I know Germans are used to it, but for me it just sounds horrible when someone's talking on top of someone in another language. Like the lips move in a different pace than the words are spoken. I don't know. I just do not like it and in a sense it's good because it's keeping me much more productive. I haven't watched TV ever since I've lived in Germany, only like Netflix where I can then watch stuff in English. But other than that, don't watch any TV, which is fine by me because I'm much more productive. And yeah, I don't know. That will be it, I think. If you guys did like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, just let me know as well. I do want to make videos that you guys enjoy. If you liked it, I'll make more. If you didn't, I won't. And also subscribe for my channel and I will see you guys in my next video. My mom.